Okay, this is the first of several video lectures for Marshall University Psychology of Personality. Uh, date February 28, 2018. I'm going to take this opportunity to lecture some stuff that is actually required for this course. Um, this is a theory based course, and I know theory isn't always the most exciting thing to discuss or talk about in class. So I'm going to use this teacher strike week as an opportunity to um, to lecture some of the theory stuff that we have to that we have to cover, and I'll make it as interesting as possible. And this is the first of several video lectures on lifespan development. We're going to talk about um, how we develop as human beings over time. Certainly, we develop physiologically, um, psychologically, and also our personalities develop over time. And we're going to spend some time talking about about this. I will direct you on Blackboard in terms of where to read in the textbook um, that will supplement this discussion. Um, you'll want to take notes on this just like you were in class. Um, this is a PowerPoint that I would have shown in class had we actually been physically there uh, in class this evening. So take some good notes on this. Probably I will ask to see these at some point and spot check them. So please make sure that you have these. I have also attach the, the PowerPoint note-taking packet for you. That should kind of help you with this as well. So first let's consider physical or biological development. So just some basic terms, not to, um, I'm going to adjust my camera here guys to make sure we, we get all this. Um, for each of us, life's begin, uh, life begins with the union of two cells, the sperm and the ovum. Uh, the sperm is the specialized male sex cell and the ovum is the specialized female reproductive cell. So this is where life begins for all of us. And you may be and you may be thinking, why are we talking about this in a personality of psychology class? Well, how we develop our capabilities, our competencies, our deficiencies. Um, all of these things have some biological roots or bases. And it can start as early as this. Um, the sperm will fertilize the egg and the new cell is referred to as a zygote. You have the embryo, which is a developing baby from the point where the major axis of the body is present until all the major structures are present, spanning from two weeks to eight weeks after conception. And you have an image of an embryo at the beginning of week six. Fetus, this is the developing baby during the final phase of development from about eight weeks after conception to birth. And we also see here, as again, I'm going to adjust my camera one last time, hopefully. Um, there we go. Um, you see an image of a fetus uh, four months after conception. Still working on my camera here, so making sure we get this right. There we go. Okay. To put this, the idea of development into perspective, most of us have had household pets at some time or another, whether it's a bird, a fish, a cat, a dog, or you know someone who has had household pets. Um, there are obvious signs of physical development over time, and you can kind of see this with newborn puppies. You see the little puppy? How cute. Then here at about six months of age. Then we see it at two years of age. We see the same dog at five years of age, ten years of age, fifteen years of age, and some dogs even live to be twenty years of age. So we see the obvious physical signs of development. Um, and again, if we backtrack, you can we can go the other way and you can look at these obvious physical signs. Definitely some physical changes take place over the lifespan. Same with human beings. There are also very obvious signs of development in human beings. Uh, world famous actress Elizabeth Taylor, often referred to as one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful, woman um, in uh, American cinema. And we can see images of her from a young age. We progress through the teenage years into her early 20s and 30s, into her 40s and 50s. And as happens to all of us at the end of life, we all demonstrate physical characteristics of change. So there's your before, or your beginning picture, and a picture of Elizabeth Taylor at the end of her life. Some obvious physical changes happen to our skin, our hair, our, our weight, um, etc. So let's think about concepts or ideas that impact our human development. Um, we know that there are physical components, obviously. What about personality? This class is all about personality. So how... How is our personality, or how are our personalities formed or developed over time? 
this is a definition that you've had before. Your personality, again, is your consistent pattern of acting, thinking, and feeling. Um, so behaviors, thoughts, and emotions. And there are different ways to think about how we develop in terms of our personality. Uh, cognitively, this is, we're going to talk more about the cognitive theory of personality development later, but cognitive approach refers to how people think and understand. Uh, cognitive processes, processes like thinking, um, uh, like motivation, for example, um, perception, uh, intelligence, all of these things tie into this, this idea of, of cognition or a cognitive approach. It comes from the Latin word cognitio, uh, which means get to know. Uh, it's concerned with the acquisition of, of knowledge. Um, you may have seen this in Introduction to Psychology or maybe in another social science class, but there are different theories of cognitive development, and these all impact and reflect personality development. And you'll want to know these, these stages of cognitive development. You'll want to have these in your notes for sure. We have what's called the sensory motor stage. Humans experience, according to Piaget, who, by the way, was a Swiss psychologist, um, humans experience the world through their senses from birth to the age of two. Their idea of, of what is right, what is wrong, what is appropriate, what is not appropriate is incorporated through their interaction with the world through their senses. Um, infant, I, I think of my daughter, for example, when she was very young, when she was 18 months of age, she found a marble. She thought it was cool. It felt kind of neat. She put it in her mouth. Thank goodness she didn't swallow it. Um, the pre-operational stage, from ages 5 to 7, humans first use language and other symbols. So kids are... Uh, young kids are starting to understand language. They're starting to understand the use of symbols. Um, young kids, for example, will, will hold up their hands to their parents as if to say, wait. Um, and they can hold out their arms as if they, to, to hug their parents like they want to receive or, or to give a hug. The concrete operational stage, humans start to actually see cause and effect. Uh, so this is a higher level of cognitive processing. You have the how and the why. Uh, and then you have the formal operation stage, which people actually start to think abstractly uh, from the age of 12 and up. Uh, human beings are able to start to um, understand what rules and norms are in society, but they're able to think independently and abstractly away from those. And personality develops along with these, uh, with these cognitive stages of development. Um, personality can only develop to the point where cognitive abilities develop. Let's call that the end of the first part of this video lecture series. Thank you.